Hey folks, it's Matt. Let's talk about Azure Machine Learning Studio and how we can use the drag and drop designer to create pipelines that we can reuse over time to repeat training runs without having to write any code. So here I am in Azure Machine Learning Studio and I've got the designer uh, bar over here on my left or I can got the nice button right here in the middle. And if I click one, it takes me to the designer where I, it asks me to select a new pipeline. Now it's got a number of templates for common tasks but I'm going to click create a new pipeline here and we're going to build this out uh, sort of together. And you'll see that it gives me a kind of this blank canvas over here and the sidebar over here on the left that lets me choose the various components that go in here. Well, I'm going to kind of collapse the sidebar here and the first thing I want to do is I want to choose some data that's going to be in here. So my model's going to need some data for the training process. Now I've already created and uploaded a number of different uh, data sources. So I'm going to use one of those. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use my Titanic data set because, you know, everybody starts with a Titanic. Uh, and I just drag it and drop it onto my widget, onto my uh, canvas. And notice I see the uh, the card here and this V1 and this data output on the bottom. And if I hover over it, it tells me it's a machine learning table. Uh, this V1 means the version one of the data set. If I double click on this, it brings up the parameters for the, for the node and I can choose which version I want. So here I can choose version one or any other version I have, really I only have one. So I can choose this as a always use latest, current latest is one. And I can go back over here, collapse that, and it, it, uh, it saved that, that change. Now, in order to train a machine learning uh, uh, model, we're gonna need a number of different things. So let's go in and add some, some new things. So we can go in here and we can expand out these nodes uh, it can be a little hard to find the various things that you're looking for until you memorize what they are. And I've also noticed a few bugs, which you'll see what I mean when, we, when I show you machine learning algorithms later on. So I'm just going to search here. I'm going to choose to select some columns. And if I type in that and hit enter, I see we've got select columns transform and we've got select columns in data set. Now we have helpful descriptions from either one and I can always click on learn more, but I know from experience that I want select columns in data set. I'm just going to drag and drop this and kind of position it below. It's giving me a little caution or danger uh, thing telling me like, hey, you, you need a value to, uh, to be required. So this is not configured correctly. So I'm going to take this data output from the Titanic node. And I'm going to drag it into the input node for my select columns. And it's still complaining about something. And so if I double click it, I see the parameters and I see it, it needs me to tell it what columns I want to select, which makes sense. So this is a full set of columns and I really only want a subset of the columns. So I can click on this, the edit column here and now I can choose what columns I want. And if I type in here, it's going to su suggest columns from, from things. So survived is usually what we're trying to predict with the Titanic, um, passenger class, uh, sex, age, and let's see, uh, let's go with their fare. Those are all kind of relevant columns. I know from experience from training uh, a number of Titanic uh, prediction algorithms to see if the, someone would have lived or died on the Titanic. Um, and if I save that, I see that it's it's going to actually, uh, the, the error has gone away and we know this is now valid. So now that I have my, my columns selected, um, now I can go in and I can actually split my data. So I'm gonna type in split. And I see, I see split data, that's what I want. With a machine learning experiment, typically we we split our data into two chunks. One large chunk is going to be for uh, training a machine learning model, and one smaller chunk is going to be for validating how effective that is and making sure our model hasn't overfit the data. So if I double click on this, I see that right now we're splitting it 50-50. So the left hand side is going to get 50% and the right hand side is going to get 50%. Well, you usually don't want a 50-50 split. You usually want 80-20 or 90-10 uh, or 70-30 or something like that. So I'm going to do 0.8. That means 80% of my data is going to go to the left and 20% is going to go to the right. I can choose a random seed or randomize and things like that if I want to. There's usually a lot of advanced options you can play around with, but let's just keep it simple here. And what I want to do is I want to train a model. So I'll search for train and I see train model right here. I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to give it the data set that it needs for training. And we see here that this one actually needs an untrained model as well. So I need to tell it what algorithm to use to 
uh, to train the model. So unlike automated machine learning or automated ML, uh, we have to actually tell it what mathematical model to use, uh, what algorithm to use for this. And so I can clear out my, my um, search parameters and I can go in here for machine learning algorithms. And this gives me all the supported ones out here. So they have a number of regression ones and then they have some classification ones and clustering ones as well. And there's tends to be bugs that I encounter with this where it actually automatically scrolls me up, which is really annoying, uh, which is tends to be why I do a lot of uh, searching here. But in this case, I might choose to do, use this multi-class logistic regression um, algorithm. I might choose that as maybe a candidate, and I can connect that to my train model. I can double click on it and tweak some of the parameters to this or hyperparameters to this if I want to. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave this here. Okay. Now it does say that one more thing is required for training the model, and that is the label column. That's what we're trying to predict. And with the Titanic, we're typically trying to predict if someone would have lived or died on the Titanic. So if I edit this, now I can go in here and I can um, I can type in the column name. So it doesn't tend to suggest the auto the the, the names of this uh, until you run your pipeline a few times. Um, and if you get this wrong, even spelling wise, it's actually going to give you an error when you try to run it. I typically get this wrong once or twice. <laughs> Uh, but here we go. So I think I typed that right. We're trying to predict if someone would have survived. That's our label. It's the value we're trying to predict. And the warning goes away. Okay. Next thing we have to do is we have to actually go in and score the model. So we're just going to drag our score model node down here. And I can connect the trained model from the model training process. That's where it fits to the training data into the, the score model step. And now it needs this other data set. And this is actually the 20% of the data that we didn't feed to this. So, so now it's like, hey, how good are you at predicting values that you don't know about? Uh, for, for these 20% of the passengers, can you accurately predict that they would have lived or died? Because remember, we, we know that from our training data set. Uh, and then the final thing I want to do is I want to actually go in and do an evaluate. So evaluate uh, model is the final thing that we do here. And that's going to give me all sorts of metrics based on the scored model. So the scored model gives me my raw scores, but the evaluate model actually generates machine learning metrics from it. I kind of wish that these two were one node, uh, but they're really two. Uh, but once we have all this, this is actually a, a valid model, uh, but it's missing one thing. I need to be able to tell it what compute resources to use for this. So I can click on settings. And this gives me settings for the entire uh, pipeline and I can choose what it's going to run on. Well, I happen to have some uh, machine learning uh, clusters available. I could also change this to be an attached compute or compute, compute instance. Usually I default to compute clusters because they tend to perform better. And once I have that, I can go down here and I can actually click validate. It's going to just check to make sure that there are no glaring errors with configuration on this. And I'll click submit. And I can choose what experiment to group it into. I have a Titanic experiment already, or I could create a new one if I wanted to. This is just for seeing how your experiment works over time and if it gets better over time or not. And this actually cues it for uh, being run. And we're going to take a look at uh, that as it's running and just watch it as it goes in fast forward action. All right, so it looks like it completed successfully. Now, if you're watching that, it looked like it uh, it kind of queued up each job that it could and ran them in sequence. If I had a compute cluster with multiple nodes running in parallel, uh, it would multitask as it could. Um, one of the neat things about this is if I needed to go in and make changes to, let's say, training the model, or I want to try a different uh, algorithm entirely, it would only rerun the, the nodes that were modified for that. It wouldn't necessarily rerun uh, these upstream ones that, that I had no changes to. So it's a fairly efficient system. So let's see what it came up with. If I double click on train model, I can see the overview gives me information about the model. And I have some outputs here. And outputs and logs gives me more access to these things, including the, uh, the data outputs, which is the train model. I can actually go in here and I can register this model so I can deploy it later on to Azure Container Instances or Kubernetes Service if I wanted to. I can look at the log over here. It's not the best user interface, but I have it. Uh, I can download all these things anyway, um, and I can just you know work with it uh, directly. 
uh, pretty cool. Now you might want to, to take a look at the train model and find the metrics, but you're going to find that the train model node doesn't actually have any metrics associated with it uh, because the metrics are actually associated uh, with the evaluation result. So we take the train model, we pipe it into the scoring process it's where we take the 20% of our data, the holdout validation data, and then from the scored data set, we, we pipe it into evaluate model. And this is actually where we go in here and we actually have our uh, resulting metrics. And we can take a look at the metrics that we have here and even include uh, more if we wanted to. Um, so there we go, we got we got some uh, some of these high level metrics available to us here. Uh, so you can kind of see a little bit more about how the model's working and if it's a good model or a bad model, the exact metrics you're gonna have are gonna depend on which uh, algorithm you chose, uh, in this case, multi-class logistic regression. Um, but this has given us this, uh, this sort of this, this high level uh, pipeline that we can use and we can actually resubmit this job periodically uh, if our data set ever changes, and it's going to actually go in and train that model again and give us new metrics and new accuracies. We could actually create an inference pipeline here uh, to make a real-time or batch inference pipeline. Um, we could publish this whole model training process as a, as a new endpoint as well. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with ML ops around um, the designer. It's a pretty complex product, so that's going to be the, the scope of today's video. Uh, but if you want more information about uh, inference pipelines, publishing, uh, anything else related to the designer, please let me know and I'd be happy to, uh, uh, to help you out with future videos. But uh, hope you enjoy and happy, uh, happy learning.